Your friends, I'm very happy to be with you this morning. And it is my prayer that the Lord may open our minds and our hearts and uh, direct our thoughts in the right way as we open his word. And you already heard the scripture reading from uh, Zechariah 4.10. Let us read that verse again. Who has despised the day of small things? Uh, these words were spoken by the Lord in connection with the work started by Zerubbabel and his uh, and his men, who had uh, returned to Jerusalem after the captivity, after the Babylonian captivity, and they were engaged in uh, the reconstruction of Jerusalem, but. The beginning of that work was so small and so insignificant and they had no means and, and practically nothing that from a human standpoint that small beginning would uh, end in, uh, in nothingness. But in the work of the Lord, small beginnings um, have often had great endings. And uh, this is what happened uh, in, the, uh, in connection with the uh, reconstruction of Jerusalem. The work was started with, uh, by, by Zerubbabel and his men. And they continued working, kept on working, kept on working, until the temple was completed, until the, the walls around the city were completed and Jerusalem was rebuilt. Now, great success or great failures may have small beginnings. And this is what we will consider today. An English writer said, despise not small things either for evil or good, for a look may work thy ruin, or a word create thy wealth. One cold winter day, when the, the ground was covered with snow, a little girl gathered up a, some crumbs of bread, and was going to carry them out to uh, scatter them on the snow to feed the birds. And her father, who was known as a rich miser, noticed what she was, what she was doing and uh, asked her, what's the big idea? What are you going to do with those crumbs? And she told him that she wanted to uh, give the crumbs to the little birds that couldn't find anything to eat. He said, but uh, <laughs> what good will that do? These crumbs uh, are not sufficient, not, not sufficient even to, to feed one bird among 100. I know that, said the girl. But if I can save at least one bird, if I cannot save them all, but can save at least one, I'll be happy. And this remark, this answer from his little girl aroused his thinking. He realized that she was right and he was wrong. Now, the results. Uh, there were many hungry people in the village, and he had refused to share his bread with them, although he was a rich man. 
he had no heart for the poor. But uh, since uh, he, he, uh, his thinking was aroused now <coughs> by the wise answer that he got from his little daughter, he said to her, um, break a whole loaf of bread into crumbs for the birds. And not only that, and not only that, he himself went out to scatter loaves of bread among the poor villagers. You see what a little, a little word can do? Samuel Johnson, another English writer, said, it is by studying little things that we attain the great art of having as little misery as possible and as much happiness as possible. By paying attention to little things. Now, let us see a few examples which we will gather from the Bible. Moses. Moses and his rod. When Moses received from God his commission to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt, he, dis he disclaimed um, any capability for so great a task. And he began to make excuses. Lord, <laughs> why do you choose me, Lord? Who am I? I know nothing. And I have no, no influence anywhere. People don't know me. And I have nothing. And the Lord listened to his excuses. And then the Lord said to him, what? You have nothing. What's that in, thy, in your hand? What's that in your hand? It's, it's only a rod. Only a rod? Okay, then use the rod. If you have nothing else, use the rod. Use what you have. Cast it on the ground. And what happened? He did so, and the rod turned into a serpent. And then, pick it up by the tail. And the rod turned into a serpent, and that rod became um, the sign of God's miracle working power in the hand of Moses. There was no magical power in itself. The rod was only a symbol. The miracle working power was in God. And the rod was only a symbol. But anyhow, the Lord worked through Moses, although he had nothing. Nothing but a rod. And the rod was the only equipment that Moses had for his great work. It was with... Uh, that rod in the hand of Moses that the Lord divided the, um, the waters of the Red Sea. It was with that rod in the hand of Moses that the Lord uh, returned uh, the water and uh, covered the Egyptian armies. And it was with that rod in the hand of Moses that... Uh, he, uh, he smote the rock and drew water from, for the thirsty people. And it was with that rod that he, uh, that rod outstretched in his hand that uh, he was uh, on a hill, on the top of a hill uh, during uh, the war with the, the Amalekites. And he prayed to God for victory, and the Lord gave his people the victory over their enemies. And it was with that rod that Moses 
walked all the way through the wilderness for 40 years and led the people of Israel to the borders of the promised land. And when the time came for uh, Moses to lay down his life, he walked um, up to the um, lonely heights of Mount Nebo, both uh, the rod in his hand, that was his only equipment. And uh, there was no retinue of um, statesmen in high positions, in high government positions, to attend him on his uh, last and lonely journey to his solitary grave. He had nothing with him except his rod. Now, what the Lord said to Moses, he also says to us. He also says to us. He puts to us the same question. What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? In our case, it's not a little, literal rod. In our case, we may have little possibilities, little talents, maybe only one talent, maybe only one minor tal talent. So what is that in thy hand? Hmm? Only one minor talent. Don't bury it. Use it. Use it. And you will see results. Unfortunately, we human beings, I'm talking about human beings in general, have a tendency to uh, underestimate our possibilities because we have received only one minor talent. And we say, uh, or if we, or we think, or we act as if we wanted to say, Lord, what can I do? I can do nothing. I know nothing, I have no means, I have no influence, I can do nothing. Uh, so I'll cross my arms and sit back and let others do the work. Those who have means, capabilities, talents, but leave me alone, I, I can do nothing. That's, that's the wrong attitude. So the, the, uh, the Lord puts to us the same question that he put to Moses. What is that in thine hand? A rod, only a rod. Okay, use that rod and you will see the results. We should bear in mind the specific reason why there is a blessing for the faithful servant. Uh, let's read in Luke 19, 17. And uh, the Lord said to him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little. What? Thou hast been faithful in a very little. Mm -hmm. Have thou authority over ten cities? So does the Lord overlook uh, very little things? No. Never. Remember the, uh, the uh, sacrifice of the poor widow. Did the Lord overlook her gift? Did no. On the contrary, the Lord might have overlooked the gift of the rich people who gave something out of their surplus. But the Lord 
took into special consideration the gift, the little gift of the poor widow. And the Lord is doing the same thing today with us. Another case, uh, the Bible talks about a boy with uh, a sling. That's all he had, a boy with a sling. And he did a great job. In the middle of a war between Israel and the Philistines, David asked permission to accept the challenge of Goliath, the uh, Philistine champion. Because this man, Goliath, was uh, insulting and defying God, and David couldn't stand that. So uh, David was equipped with uh, the king's armor, his helmet of brass, and uh, his coat of mail, and his heavy sword to meet the enemy in single combat, but uh, David did not feel comfortable to use uh, someone else's equipment. He said, no, I will use my own sling. <laughs> and he uh, got five uh, little stones out of the brook, and you know the result. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, he did his job, and what happened? A great victory was obtained. Another example. A young man and his frugal meal. Just five loaves and two fish. One day, Jesus stood uh, among a hungry multitude of people who had come to listen to him. There were 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children. And in those days, they, people had many children. I suppose that there were maybe 20,000 people with Jesus. And there was no food. And they were hungry. Now what to do? And night was coming on, so <laughs> the disciples suggested to Jesus, Lord, dismiss this multitude. But dismiss them how? Where could 20,000 people find enough food? In those little villages, there was not enough food to... Even if they had enough money to buy food, in those vill little villages, there was not enough food for 20,000 people. And what did the Lord say to them? Dismiss them. No, no way. You give them to eat. But how? How is that possible? How can we give them to eat if, if we do not have uh, one morsel of food left? Uh, finally, they found a boy who had. <laughs> <laughs> five loaves and two fish, and he was willing to share his, uh, his provision with, uh, with the others. But uh, what is five loaves and two fish to feed 20,000 people? Okay, the Lord said, bring, uh, bring, these, uh, bring this food to me. And the Lord blessed it, multiplied it, gave it to the disciples. And uh, 
the disciples handed out the food among the hungry crowd. And uh, what happened? And everybody ate until full, and they still gathered up 12 baskets full of leftovers. Now, the lesson here is the same that we uh, learn from, uh, that we can learn from David, from uh, Zerubbabel, from Moses. The same lesson. Use what you have. Don't even try to use or think of using what you don't have. Just use what you have, and you will see the results. <coughs> Let me read to you a statement from the book Desire of Ages, 371. The means in our possession may not seem to be sufficient for the work, but if we will move forward in faith, believing in uh, the all-sufficient power of God, abundant resources will open before us. If the work be of God, he himself will provide the means for its accomplishment. He will reward honest, simple reliance upon him. The little that is wisely and economically used in the service of the Lord of heaven will increase in the very act of imparting. In the hand, in the hand of Christ, the small supply a food remained uh, undiminished until the famished multitude were satisfied. If we go to the source of all strength with our hands of faith outstretched to receive, we shall be sustained in our work even under the most forbidding circumstances and shall be enabled to give to others the bread of life. Many times what we lack more than anything else is not equipment, it's faith. Faith in the first place. Let's See if we can learn a lesson also from another example, the, uh, the parable of the mustard seed. Jesus spoke the parable of the mustard seed when he had only a few followers, and these few followers were simple Galileans simple Galileans, illiterate men, fishermen, peasants. And when the uh, leaders of the Jewish nation looked at those men, what did they say? What? Is this new teacher called Jesus going to establish a kingdom <laughs> Who are these men? Who are these men? They're simple Galileans. They know not they're ignorant people. They're illiterate. They have nothing. Absolutely nothing. They can do nothing. He will go bankrupt before he begins his business. Yeah, this is the remark that people often make in connection with the work of God. But Jesus said to his disciples that the promise of God to Abraham 
could be fulfilled from that small beginning. Now, what was the promise of God to Abraham? Let's read in Genesis 22, 18. In thy seed, that means in Jesus Christ, the seed of Abraham, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. What? That means through Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, all the nations of the earth would receive blessings. <laughs> Just imagine what a promise. <coughs> through the seed of Abraham, through Jesus Christ, through the gospel of Christ, all the nations of the world would receive blessings. And we can see these blessings until today. Because the nations that, that have received the, the gospel are in a different position in comparison with those that have not received the gospel. And Jesus said that this, the gospel of the kingdom will finally be preached all over the world as a testament to all nations. But from that small beginning, from that small beginning, which in the eyes of the Jewish leaders was just nothing, but Jesus presented the, the, uh, the parable of the mustard seed. The mustard seed is a very small, a very small seed. But what happens when it's put into the ground, into fertile ground, what happens? It becomes a, a big plant. Big one? A big bush. Yeah, a big bush. <coughs> now, uh, little things may have great results, great positive results, but those things may also bring great negative consequences. We must consider both sides of, uh, of the problem, of the uh, aspect. The Bible says, it is the little foxes that spoil the vineyard or that spoiled wines. What does that mean? The little foxes spoil the wine or the vines or the vineyard. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means we should be careful with little things. Why? Because little things may bring serious consequences. Someone said, I think it was, um, it was uh, Benjamin Franklin. Uh, he said, for want of a nail, the horseshoe was lost. And for want of a horseshoe, the horse was lost. And for want of the horse, the messenger, the rider was lost as he was overtaken and killed by the enemy. And for want of the messenger and the message, the message that he was carrying, the battle was lost. And what was the beginning of the problem? Only a little nail that was missing in the horseshoe. Uh, let me read to you a statement from uh, Review and Herald, December the 29th, 1910. The little defect, the little neg neg no, the little defects, the little neglects, the little deficiencies, the little dishonesties, the little departures from principle blind the soul and separate it from God. It is the little things of life that develop, develop the spirit 
and determine the character. Those who neglect the little things will not be prepared to endure severe tests when they are brought to bear upon them. Remember that the character building is not finished till life ends. Uh, every day a good or bad brick is placed in the structure. You are either building crookedly or with the exactness and correctness that will make a beautiful temple for God. Every individual is a temple. What did Paul say? Don't you know that you are the temple of God? Each individual is a temple. Therefore, in uh, looking for great things to do, neglect not the little opportunities that come to you day by day. He who neglects the little things and yet flatters himself that he is ready to do wonderful things for his master, if he had the means, which he doesn't have, hmm? is in danger of failing altogether. Life is made up not of great sacrifices and wonderful achievements and great things, but of little things. Many years ago there was a shipwreck on the coast of Ireland. An ocean liner sank, and people, w people were bewildered, starting asking questions uh, when they heard of uh, the disaster. Because there was no storm when this happened, no storm. The ship was in good condition, and this, the, uh, the pilot and the captain were experienced seamen. But a disaster happened. So the ship crashed against the rocks And what could have been the cause. The men of the shipping company and the authorities wanted to find out and they sent a, uh, a group of divers to, uh, to salvage a number of items from the ship, to study the problem, to investigate the cause of the disaster. And among the items that were brought back from the ship, was also a compass box. Oh, they opened it to see if anything was wrong with it. Sure, there was something wrong with it. Uh, the tip, uh, the tip of a, the point of a uh, knife blade was found inside. It was broken off by someone who was trying to clean the, uh, the compass. And this was enough. It was just a little piece of metal, but this was enough to cause the compass to give the wrong reading and to misguide the pilot and to direct the boat against the rocky coast. You see what a little thing can do? So any one of us can suffer spiritual shipwreck if we overlook the importance of little things. <coughs> it's very dangerous. <coughs> Yeah. 
You must have noticed many times if a, uh, a fruit falling from the tree before it is ripe, falling from the tree out of season. When you open the fruit, you find that it is warm eaten. But how, how did it begin? A little bug deposited a little egg, a, a tiny little egg. That was the beginning of a uh, destructive process, which went on imperceptibly, gradually, until the fruit was completely ruined. And the same thing happens to a Christian believer uh, if he neglects little duties, uh, if he commits little sins, and uh, if little inconsistencies are observed in his life, just little things. A Christian does not suffer shipwreck suddenly, no. If, if he suffers shipwreck, this means that a process was going on in his soul, a process which had a little beginning. Let me read to you another statement from the book Christ's Object Lessons. He that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. By unfaithfulness in even the smallest duties, man robs his maker of the service which is his due. This unfaithfulness reacts upon himself. He fails of gaining the grace, the power, the force of character which may be received through an unreserved surrender to God. Living apart from Christ, he is subject to Satan's temptations, and he makes, uh, he makes mistakes in his work for the Master. Because he is not guided by right principles in little things, he fails to obey God in great matters, which he regards as his special work. But remember, if he is not faithful in little things, he will not be faithful in great things either. Remember that. Because he is not guided by right principles in little things. He fails to obey God in great matters, which he regards as his special work. The defects cherished in dealing with life's minor details pass into more important affairs. And he acts on the principles to which he has accustomed himself. Thus, actions repeated form habits, habits form character, and by the character, our destiny for time and for eternity is decided. To confirm what uh, we are saying, let us read a few verses in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 5, 6. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? 
Mm -hmm. The whole dough is leavened by just a little leaven. That's enough. That is enough. That is sufficient to leaven the whole dough. Just a little portion of leaven. And this has a spiritual meaning. James 3, verses 4 through 6. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about the whole body. Behold also the ships, which uh, though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm. Whithersoever the governor listeth, even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how a great matter and behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Just a match. And what may happen? And what may happen? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire, and, and is, it is set on fire of hell. Luke 16.10. He that is faithful in that which is least, in the smallest things, mm -hmm. is faithful also in much. And he that is in unjust in the least is unjust also in much. An American writer was right when he said, and I agree with him, Bruce Barton. He said, sometimes when I consider what tremendous consequences come from little things, I'm tempted to think there are no little things. May God help us. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank thee for all thy blessings. We thank thee for this gathering here and for the Bible study, for thy word. We thank thee, Lord, for the warnings that we find in thy word, that we should be careful with little things so that we may be found uh, faithful in uh, and the great things and the great responsibilities that thou hast entrusted to us. Lord, help us understand this lesson that we may consider the importance of little things in our lives so that we may be prepared for greater things and we pray that thou wilt bless thy people with uh, the understanding of this uh, lesson here and everywhere. Bless thy people and uh, strengthen thy people and draw us closer to thee 
and bless our preparation for what is coming upon this world so that we may be prepared for the events of these last days. Give us the assurance of sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.